Okay, let's do one last thing. Let's just switch this stuff over. And uh, I want to go and uh, I want to do a, a replica version. Okay. Replica is a little bit simpler. Um, so uh, let me take this stuff out. Is there a drive? I'll take this blue out of here. K and M don't mean anything anymore. Nope, not at all. No, they don't mean anything anymore. So my storage policy is gone to to rep. And really, you just at this point, you just say replicated, because the cool thing about um, I, I guess I should touch that on erasure code real quick. If we set it two plus one, yep. can I go back later and change it to a four plus two if my cluster gets bigger? For some reason, you want to do that? You can't, unfortunately. Once you set your erasure code profile like your choice of numbers, yep. it, it's there. If you do want to move it to a different erasure code, you would make that other pool copy the data over and then kill the initial pool. That's and, how you do Ceph that. Ceph has tools for copying Ceph pools. Ceph has tools for that, else, so. yeah, exactly. But you just need the extra storage in your cluster to, or a separate cluster to be able to move that. Yeah, 100%. You just, you just got to have the room, right? You got to have the room. Um, the reason I brought that up is because once you get into a replicated policy, you notice how you wanted to put two rep. I said, I'll just put replicated. Yep. Because you have the ability with replicated to change how many replication copies yep. you have on the fly. Yep. You can build the two and switch to a three later. Now it'll aggressively start creating new data on your back end network. You noise of you know, it's clicking. And you and see the LED yep. and everything's flying. But yep. you really have that ability to go, oh, geez, I need more copies of this. Or, I wasn't paying attention. I filled my cluster up, and I'm not going to be able to expand at the time. You can knock it down to a two, okay, okay, and free some space up or something like that. So that, that's that's why I made that distinction. Okay, good. So I set my policy replicated. Uh, failure is at host. Same, cool. Uh, which again, you don't have to know much about that, do you? It, it's gonna put them in the right place so that you can, you know, yeah, that you got everything's replicated, and you can lose half up to half your storage. I, it's safe to always go with host, but there are a few there there are there are scenarios where going at the device level is a useful useful tool as well. Yeah, device level, I can see where it'd be useful. Uh, it, it, it you're protected like it's just like having RAID arrays. It's, right? it's almost like having a RAID array that's yeah. bigger. Like you have a RAID array that's bigger than one box, and, and which in, is a and cool idea. And inf infinitely flexible. Yeah, one hundred percent. Massively flexible. You set yeah. up RAID, you're stuck where you are, yeah. and you got that. You could just so incredibly flexible. But pretty much, if you're gonna do a replicated. Don't do it at the device level. You're, 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 you're going to get into trouble. Yeah, because if you lost the server, you may have your copies on the same server. And, and our criteria for this use case was we said we want to be able to lose a server. So there we go. So, so We're it staying forces at the host. us to go to, to, go yeah. to host. Um, OK, and let's go over our storage efficiency. If it's too rep, it's 50%. 100%, yep. So that nope, means it's 50%. <laughs> it's <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. Yes, it's 50%. <laughs> Missed that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, too quick for me. So that, that means I need. Uh, I need 50 drives raw, yeah. which means I need 100 at my 50% storage capacity. My 10% rule, I need uh, you know another 10, 11, or something drives in that. So I'm going to go. I really need. I need to put 110 drives in this thing. Cool. And it's a fair chunk more than my my 80, my 90 that I got to. But I do have a full separate copy of everything elsewhere. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And uh, and the rep thing's really interesting. You said if you got that, and let's say I expanded it, and we talked about let's put in sixty drive machines. Yep. And uh, let's double the capacity. If I can flip it to three rep for a while, if I want to, right? Yeah. 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 And, and, and and just just set one number, and the thing goes rearranges everything. Yeah. And like even I was playing on the weekend the other or not the weekend so earlier in the week. Um, you yeah you you could drop it down to a one, ingest a bunch of data quickly and then replicate it out later like I I just I keep going back to this point of like it's just flexible it's so so flexible yeah. Yeah. and flexibility is almost one of the things that intimidates people isn't it yeah we, it's the paradox of choice right like yeah. it's even the first time I knew when I when we first really dove into Ceph I was like okay I'm I'm believing what people are saying this is the future of storage but you go to read it and you go oh geez man this is complicated and then as you start to get into it you're like Oh, it's just it's freedom. They're just presenting me with so much freedom, and then and that's really what we've become in Forty Five Drives, and why we say our our Forty Five Drive store solution is powered by Ceph. As in, we know we know how to make it work and and tweak and tune it to. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is, we learned the scary stuff to make it less scary for the end user. Yeah, and somebody comes to us at Forty Five Drives. I mean that that architecture up front. Even if you want to do all the building yourself, it's all yours. Come on in. We'll consult with you on architecture. Oh, yeah, for sure. Figure out what 
you want to accomplish. We'll get it sized. We'll get figure out the right machines to accomplish what you want on it. Yeah. And then on top of that, if you want, we will pre-configure. Uh, an awful lot of our, I think most of our clusters are pre-configured, aren't they? Almost all of them. They uh, just, they, them. a lot of people um, will, they'll say, oh, I got it from here, thank you. But they like to um, chat about what, 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 how it's getting built, why, and yeah, they just, they, they want to have that touch of. Uh, yep, good, so consultation at the start. Expertise. Most people, it's a pre-configuration is incredibly cost effective because we're really good at setting up clusters. And if you're like a typical IT team in most enterprises, if you're not running cluster right now, you got to come up with a learning curve, and it's way cheaper to deal with us yeah. than to come up with a learning curve. And that's it. We we take you will hear from about Ceph sometimes, which is is true, is it has a steeper learning curve. Well, that's what we do with pre-config and stuff. We we take that learning curve and we start you up here rather down at the bottom. So and, you only have that last little bit to climb. And then, so we got a pre-configured cluster shows up with file gateways. We can sell the file gateways as well. You got it. Yep. And. Uh, and that arrives, you plug it in, and then we're there with you. Because mm -hmm. the next thing, clients, clients anybody clients, who's clients. ever run a network storage knows you got to get those shares and security policies and all that. And we do that. We're there to hold your hand through the whole thing. 100%. That's, that's one thing. Getting a cluster stood up and say, look, see, it can store stuff. And then it doesn't end until all those clients are talking and working the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We, we and go I'm doing all the Active the Directory and then I have oh, a bunch yeah. of Macintoshes and Windows machines mixed. And, Ooh, uh, now yeah. you're scaring me yeah. now. Yeah. No, I'm just no, kidding. We, we, we get through that all. Yeah, we kidding. get through it. We make it work. And uh, and then when we're done, uh, you know, the other thing is transferring that learning curve because we're our open model. We're as flexible as you want. You want to do any work you want to do, great. Anything you want to hire us to do. Will will do for you, and you can figure that out. But mm. you know, at the end of the day, you got to be able to maintain your network. But we are always there behind when you know, uh, God forbid, the shit ever hits the fan mm -hmm. and, uh, and and something happens, then we're behind to, to untie it. That's the nice thing about Seth, though. Uh, things can't really shit the bed so bad that you got to throw the bed out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, like it's, right, it's, yeah. it's pretty self fixing. Yeah. To the point of you got to neglect it for months of it yelling at you before it like yeah. ever dug yeah. itself into a hole. And uh, really, in the past, in the early days of Ceph, they've they've eliminated all. For those who look, sometimes there are some scary stories of Ceph. But if you always look at the date from like five, seven years ago, yeah. well, this technology was really getting mature. And as of like version twelve, the Luminous release, we're on release thirteen right now. Um, They've put a lot of good um, safety checks in there, so oh. where a, a, it, neglect can't end up killing your cluster or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I guess what I'm saying is the thing is magically self-healing, yeah. and you got to try really, really hard yeah. Yeah. To, to get this in a state where you're scared of it. So when you end up, if you go 45 drives, self-powered 45 drives, end up with ironclad, our, our bulletproof mm -hmm. machines, direct wire, uh, between the hard drive and the OSD daemon, and uh, owed over a robust, you know, design a robust network to go with it, and you got a great combination of hardware and, and software, and we're behind, and you got that flexibility. You buy from where you want to buy with both services and, and hardware. You're not locked into anything, so you're on the open model, and you got the best of, best of all worlds. Yeah, I honestly, I don't think it gets any better than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, maybe we talked enough for today. I think so. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd love to talk more about what the other things Seth can do at some point. Uh, we, should, we should do that one too. Beautiful. Object and block. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's Friday and, uh, and yes. uh, I got a weekend I'm looking forward to and you do too. Yeah, so, so. let's get out of here. Cool, man. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Brett. Thank you everybody for watching. So, and if you want to get a hold of us, uh, 45drives.com and uh, all our contact information is there. Thank you for mm -hmm. listening.